Hello, this video is phytoestrogen. What's the big concern for breast cancer? Hi, I'm Marnie Clark and I'm a breast cancer coach. Uh, phytoestrogen and the role it plays in our health, especially if you have been diagnosed with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, has to be one of the most misunderstood plant compounds on the planet. Uh, I frequently get asked about whether or not phytoestrogen is safe for those with a breast cancer diagnosis. So I decided to make this nifty little video to help explain the role of phytoestrogen, especially as it relates to breast cancer. And I have loads of critical information to share with you here, so please stick with me right up to the end so that you don't miss anything important. So if you have any questions about anything I presented here, please leave a comment in the comment section below the video and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. First of all, though, I've got a question for you. Are you one of those people who have been, at, have been told to stay away from phytoestrogens because you had estrogen receptor positive breast cancer? If so, tell me about your experience. Leave it in the comment section. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So what exactly is a phytoestrogen? It is nothing more, uh, first of all, the word means plant estrogen, and it's nothing more than a group of chemicals found in plants, uh, and because of their chemical uh, structure, they can mimic the human hormone estrogen. And therein lies the controversy. Uh, now I'm going to move on to some slides because I have a lot of information to, to show you here, and I don't want to forget anything important, so let's go on now to the slides. Sources of phytoestrogen uh, include many foods, chiefly soy and legumes, flaxseed, high fiber foods, beans, alfalfa, red clover, and a few other herbs. I'll share a more complete list with you later in this video. So here's the controversy. Women come to me all the time and tell me that their doctor or nutritionist told them that since they have hormone driven breast cancer, it shows up as ER plus on your pathology report. They need to stay away from any food that contains phytoestrogen. For a couple of types of breast cancer, that might be true, and I emphasize the word might. I'll tell you more about that later, but for everyone else, it simply isn't true. Natural therapists have been using phytoestrogen with their patients with hormone-driven cancers for several decades, successfully, I might add, relying upon the anecdotal evidence of the patients that were successfully treated with them. For many years, we just had to know what we knew, that phytoestrogen was beneficial and protective, and wait for the research to back that up. We now have that research, and I'll share these studies with you in a minute. Here's how phytoestrogen really works. When you eat a food containing phytoestrogen, it enters the body and docks with cells that have estrogen receptor sites on them. To our best knowledge, there are two kinds of estrogen receptors, alpha and beta, and here's a little view of what they look like. When estrogen receptor alpha is activated, it is known to promote proliferation, which means rapid growth, of breast cells, while an activated ER beta opposes that action. According to studies, phytoestrogen has a higher affinity for docking with ER beta, which means it opposes proliferation. Once docked, a phytoestrogen either acts similarly to the body's own estrogen or it acts as an estrogen antagonist, meaning it opposes the action of the body's own estrogen. This means that phytoestrogen is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, or CIRM. An example of a well-known CIRM is the drug tamoxifen, used for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, and indeed, the chemical structure of phytoestrogen is similar to that of tamoxifen. Here's what tamoxifen and estrogen look like. All right, get that, get that in your mind. Now look at the next one. The similarity between the phytoestrogen and human estrogen is much closer. Here's the important part. When a phytoestrogen docks with an estrogen receptor on a cell, it exerts a much weaker action than the body's own estrogen. 
whether a phytoestrogen acts as an estrogen or an anti-estrogen seems to depend on the amount of circulating estrogen that is already present in the body, as well as the number and type of estrogen receptors in that person's body. And for every claim I'm making in this video, I have research to back that up, and you can find that in an article on my website, and I link to that article below in the description, the video description. A 2009 study on soy, which is reference 3 in my article, found that women who regularly consumed soy products such as soy milk, edamame, or tofu had a 32% lower risk of their breast cancer returning and a 29% decreased risk of death compared with women who consumed little or no soy. A 2013 study on soy, reference 6 in my article, concluded with this statement by the authors. Soy consumption may be associated with reduced risk of breast cancer incidence, recurrence, and mortality. Soy does not have estrogenic effects in humans. Soy intake consistent with a traditional Japanese diet appears safe for breast cancer survivors. A systematic review of studies investigating flaxseed and breast cancer reported in 2014, reference 4 in my article, found that just 25 grams of flaxseed, about four tablespoons of ground seed, decreased hot flushes, flashes, wherever you're from, depends <laughs> on how you say that, improved breast density, had anti-cancer activity, decreased the risk of breast cancer, improved mental health, and lowered mortality rates among breast cancer patients, and significantly slowed down the rate of cells multiplying in the breast tissue of people who were at higher risk for breast cancer. So, what about triple negative breast cancer? The cells of someone diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer lack estrogen receptors, and I'm often asked whether phytoestrogen would make any difference for this type of breast cancer. At the moment, we only have in vitro, which is test tube studies, so it's a little early to say, but one 2015 stu cell study, reference 7 in my article, found that when phytoestrogens were added to invasive triple negative breast cancer cells, there was a decrease in cell proliferation. Remember, that means rapid growth. A 2018 cell study, reference 8 in my article, had similar findings. While cell studies certainly don't replicate what's happening in the body, this research bears watching. So, should women on hormone blocking medication avoid phytoestrogen? A 2018 clinical trial, reference 9 in my article, involving over 500 breast cancer patients found that there, were, there was a benefit for women taking the aromatase inhibitor anastrozole and eating soy. Study authors stated, in the study reported here, high intake of soy isoflavones reduced the risk of recurrence among patients receiving anastrozole treatment. This effect might be due to the synergistic inhibitory effects of isoflavones and anastrozole on the synthesis of estrogen. A 2004 animal study, reference 10 in my article, examined the effects of flaxseed and tamoxifen alone and in combination for mice with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Researchers found that the combination of flax and tamoxifen inhibited tumor size more than 53% as compared with tamoxifen on its own. I read several such animal studies, all of which indicated that the combination of flaxseed and tamoxifen worked better than either on its own at inhibiting breast cancer tumor size, growth, and spread. Researchers don't yet know if these results will apply to actual humans with breast cancer, but this approach, adding flaxseed to the diet, certainly does no harm and may indeed be extremely beneficial. So what about women with HER2 positive breast cancer? Remember earlier when I said that there were a couple of types of breast cancer that might not benefit from phytoestrogens? Here's what I found out about that. 
For women with AGR2 positive tumors, a very small 2015 study, referenced 11 in my article, found that eating soy could be associated with an increased rate of recurrence. Now it's important to keep in mind that this study only included 339 women, 25 of whom had a breast cancer recurrence, and only 8 of those 25 had AGR2 positive tumors. Based on this single study and other research, there is insufficient evidence that HER2 positive patients should avoid soy. This is su simply something to be aware of. For women who had HER2 negative tumors, soy consumption was significantly protective, safe, and showed mostly positive effects. Please also be aware that flaxseed has been found to decrease HER2 overexpression, and this uh, research is referenced for in my article. Flaxseed has also been shown to increase the, the effectiveness of Herceptin, a targeted drug given to those with HER2 positive breast cancer, reference 12 in my article. So flaxseed appears to be beneficial for those with HER2 breast cancer, while soy is slightly questionable. So the other group that might not benefit from soy phytoestrogens is premenopausal women deemed to be at high risk for breast cancer. A very small 2012 clinical study, reference 13 in my article, found that for this category of women, taking soy isoflavones appeared to increase the growth of breast cells. To be fair, the study did not use whole soy foods. Instead, they were using more concentrated components from soy including genistein, daidzine, and glycetine, which I don't recommend. One wonders if they would have found the same results had they been using whole organic soy foods. So that lead me, leads me to the next thing. I, I suggest that we avoid soy protein isolate and concentrated supplements because they appear to have different effects on breast tumor cells. So I think it's best to avoid them. Uh, and soy protein isolate is a, is a known breast cancer risk. This is sometimes found in protein powders and other processed foods. I recommend that people limit or avoid intake of concentrated supplements containing isoflavones like genistein in favor of less processed options, such as the foods appearing in the list I'm about to show you. And please, always choose organic soy when you eat soy, and here's why. Back in the late 90s, only 8% of soy was genetically modified. As of 2015, 93% of the soy in the U.S. was genetically modified, and you definitely don't want that in your body. So here's my list. If you want to, pause the video and copy these down. Soybeans, soy nuts, soy milk, edamame, tempeh, tofu, miso, soy sauce, tamari, flaxseed, also known as linseed, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, oats, barley, rye, hops, so yes, that includes beer, wheat germ, chickpeas, lentils, yams, alfalfa, apples, carrots, pomegranates, coffee, licorice root, and red clover. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting and not too hard going. I know some of it can be a little bit uh, dry. So uh, let me know if you uh, have any more questions and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Uh, also, please feel free to sign up for my free newsletters. They are full of my best tips on uh, healing and prevention and you can use the link below the video to sign up for them. If I can help you on your breast cancer journey, I am honored to walk along beside you and help you as much or as little as you need. Uh, this is an adversary I know about. I fought breast cancer myself. I lost my mother and my grandmother to this disease, so I've made it my business to know it well. I know what works and I know what doesn't work. And if I can help you, I am more than happy to do so. So um, it's, it's, it's all really, it's all about helping you get through breast cancer so that you're healthy and thriving on the other side of this. Thank you so much for watching.